Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So, I would like to start by saying Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah for the one who is most merciful. Alhamdulillah that he has allowed us once again to reach the day of Eid, the most blessed day. And also Alhamdulillah that he allowed us all here in Canada to celebrate the day of Eid on the same day. Usually there's some issues, but Alhamdulillah we're all here on the same day celebrating Eid. It is truly something to be grateful for. And as we all know, we had a visitor. We had one of the most wonderful guests who could have ever visited us. He, it was with us for a whole month. And that wonderful guest, it is known as Ramadan. And it was here to, with us till yesterday and it has left us since. But hopefully, we would hope that it left us with enlightenment. And as I'm looking around the room right now, I can see the light of Ramadan on your faces. I feel like I'm standing in a room full of flashlights. I could see the nur on your faces. But Alhamdulillah, that is great. And we should strive to keep that light of Ramadan, the enlightenment, the peace and ibadah and worship, the connection with Allah that we developed in that month. We should strive to keep it with us till we get to renew it in the next month, right? The month of Ramadan, obviously, alhamdulillah, we are, we are able to worship Allah more and to dedicate more time to Him and to connect with Him more. And we should strive to hold on to that. It doesn't make sense to, that, to just drop it the day it leaves, right? Imagine if you were to get a really wonderful guest and the second he leaves, he hears you celebrating behind the door that, oh, he's finally gone. That should not be the case, obviously, right? As Ramadan left us with certain gifts, we should hold on to those gifts. Even if you're not able to hold on to all of the ibadah that, that you were doing in Ramadan, at least part of it. Surely, okay, you, we're not expected to pray Tarawih every year, but maybe some nafil, some sunnah, some charity, some connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should strive to hold on to it until Ramadan returns to us next year. And, you know, there's a, unfortunately, there's a very hard reality, a very dark reality that awaits for us outside those doors. And the fact of the matter is that as Ramadan ends, shayateen and shaitan, they're let go once again. They are freed from their chains. This is part of the mercy and qadr of Allah. They're freed from their chains and they're allowed to roam amongst us once again. And shaitan, what does he do? Shaitan, he might tempt you to break that connection with Allah. He might tempt you to do things that, are, that will disobey Allah. Even on the day of Eid, shaitan is completely relentless as the Prophet and Allah says that shaitan, he is your biggest enemy. Even on the day of Eid, he will try to ruin that day for you. He might try to make you do things that are in disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He might say, oh, let's go to certain places or hang out with certain people to the club or shisha lounge or wherever play people might go on the day of Eid. This is all from the disobedience of Allah. Or he might say, you know, let's show off our clothes and our food and let's uh, boast about it to people. I'm not, by the way, to be clear, I'm not saying that you're not allowed to have fun. The day of Eid is a day of celebration. It is to have fun. I'm not saying you can't take pictures or show people, but we should be mindful, right? We should be mindful that we're doing it not in order to boast or be arrogant or to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the, the biggest goal of ours should always be to be mindful of Allah and to obey Him in every single way we can, right? Because shaitan, he's not going to tell you to just straight up sin, right? He's not going to come to you and be like, you know what, let's go murder some people. That's not what's going to happen. Shaitan, he sees that you have now left this blessed month of Ramadan and you have this connection with Allah and he hates seeing that. So he will try to break it slowly but surely. He'll try little ways, maybe do this or go do that or talk to this person or go to this place. Little by little, he'll try to break you down. So don't let him. Hold on to this gift of Ramadan. Hold on to it. And remember, just like Ramadan was a few days, this life of this world is also very few days. Just like how Ramadan it was very few days with us, it was only about 30 days, this worldly life is also very, very few days. Ramadan, it came and it went like that. And just like that, this worldly life, it will come and go just like that. Today, you are praying tomorrow the prayer might be given for you. Today you are praying behind the imam, 
tomorrow the imam might be praying with your body in front of him which is how the janazah namaz is done right so be mindful of this and be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so you have this gift you know a gift that is more precious than Ramadan there's a gift that every single person in this room has that is more precious and more valuable than Ramadan itself and that gift is the gift of Islam so hold on to it and be proud of it as one of the guest speakers generously mentioned that I'm seeing around the room alhamdulillah we are dressed in the clothes of our culture of our religion that will reflect our values so be proud of this as we are proud of it today we should be proud of it tomorrow and the day after and for years and years to come wear your religion with pride wear your religion with honor as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran Man kana yuridul izzah, jami'a. he says whoever wishes for respect and honor and glory and status then he should know that glory and status belong only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he gives it to whoever he wills so as Muslims we should be proud of our religion we should be proud of our Muslim identity and we should be proud of just like how we are sitting today very proud of the month we have completed we should hold on to this this is not something for one day this is a lifestyle this is something that should last a lifetime so hold on to this and from the things that we do hold on to in Islam is of course the Quran and the Sunnah the Sunnah being the traditions of the Prophet and from the traditions of the most amazing man to ever walk on this earth the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one of his traditions on the day of Eid was that he would give certain reminders to the people and of those reminders I will mention a few of them I, I will try to mention as many as I can one of them is charity so uh, inshallah I will end with this reminder that uh, one of the reminders that the Prophet left with us is on the day of Eid it is to exercise patience and I know on the day of Eid many things will not go the way you want it to go right uh, throughout Ramadan we imagine Eid to be this magical day that my clothes will be a certain way and the food will be like this and I'm gonna meet my friend and he's gonna say, say so and so but it doesn't work out that way it never works out that way I know first thing in the morning your parents might shout at you or something stuff happens so one thing that I will implore you to hold on to is be patient things happen things might not go your way maybe the guy outside will cut you off in the parking lot things happen so just be patient and have some endurance for your fellow brothers and sisters in Islam so with that I will end my very very humble and sincere reminder to all of you I have said what you have heard may Allah forgive us for all of our shortcomings and finally I will cover how the Eid Salah will be done so the Eid Salah it has it is just like two regular rakatain like how we pray two rakats sunnah or nafil however in addition it has six extra takbir six extra times we say Allahu Akbar so you start with obviously the first Allahu Akbar which we do for every normal salah that is called takbir al ihram so this is the first takbir and then you drop your hands and in addition there will be three more takbirs so there will be the first one and then three more after that on the third one you will tie your hands then the imam he'll read surah fatiha he'll read a surah he'll pray the rest of the rakat regularly and in the second rakat he will stand he'll read surah fatiha and a surah regularly and then in addition he will do three more takbirs on the fourth one he will go into ruku'ah so on the second one after fatiha and the surah he will do three takbirs he will say Allah Akbar three times then a fourth one to go into ruku'ah and the rest of the salah as normal so that is the method of the Eid Salah and inshallah we'll be starting shortly okay Jazakallah Khairan can I make you can I ask all of you to stand up please make your line straight and in the meantime can I ask the volunteers to go through the rows uh, please give whatever you can generously for the cost of the hall Okay, uh, please fill the gaps in between behind the cameraman. Uh, if you guys can, whoever is there on the sides, please move up, fill the gaps, take that space up. Whoever has musallas or janimazas, you can fill that space up as well. 
and volunteers please go through the rows. Again, please give generously. This is really just to cover the cost of the hall. Alhamdulillah, uh, as Imam Nafis mentioned in the Khatm al-Quran night, uh, we currently don't have any new projects, so we're not doing any fundraising for construction. But uh, we do still need to cover the costs of the hall, and we need to cover the costs of operations. So please help us to uh, cover those costs. We appreciate that very much. Straight your lines. Eat ki namaz ka tariqa Imam Muhtaram ne aapko bataya. Phir ek bar zahin mein bithale. Imam Pali Martaba Hat Uthayenge Allahu Akbar Kekar or Hat Ban Lenge. Aap Sab Sana Pade, Pir Uskebad Imam Ek Martaba Pir Allahu Akbar Kahenge, Dusri Takbir Hogie, Hat Chor Denge, Pir Tisri Martaba Allahu Akbar Kahenge, Pir Hat Chor Denge. Paheleme Banahe, Do Me Chornahe, Pir Uskebad Allahu Akbar Imam Kekar Sure Fatia Padenge, Ye Pali Rakat. Pir Dusri Rakat Kebad Imam Utenge, Sure Fatia Padenge, Pir Surat Padenge. फिर रुकू में जाने से पहले तीन मर्तबा अल्लाहु अकबर कहकर छोड़ देंगे चौथी मर्तबा अल्लाहु अकबर में चले जाएंगे शुरू करें सौ सफूफकुम अल्लाहु अकबर Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله ثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إن إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصلى النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا 
قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل توثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حميده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر <تصفيق> الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تصلى نارا حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم طعام إلا من ضريب